Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to another week in personal finance at the University of Houston. This week I'm going to teach you about credit scores. We'll talk a little bit about credit reports uh, just so that you know what information comes from the credit report and is turned into your credit score. So as you probably already learned, uh, from watching your Dave Ramsey videos. Dave likes to call these I love credit scores. Uh, so you get to make up your mind, um, but I'm going to teach you uh, some basic information about credit scores, what they are, where they come from, why they're important. Um, so first of all, I want to just highlight, uh, I'm going to include a link to these flashcards from Quizlet. I've created a class, a U of H class, as you can see there. So I'm going to be giving you a link so that you can see these flashcards and you can play with them if you like. Um, there's really no test at this point, um, but you'll watch the other videos, you'll do your article, um, and then you'll watch this video and pay attention to these flashcards. So without further ado, let me jump in and start to just talk about uh, the credit score. Here we go. So the first card we have here is uh, suggesting that you summarize the importance of consumer spending in the economy. It's important to know that 60 to 70 percent of the gross domestic product, the growth of the GDP in the U.S., is a result of consumer spending consumer spending fuels our economy. And so as we go through these flashcards and we go through this topic, just know that your spending is helping our economy grow. So let's go to the next card. Let's identify three types of loans, three different credit types that make up consumer lending. So we have credit cards, home equity loans, home equity lines of credit, auto loans and other recreational vehicle loans, appliance loans, these are all included in credit types. So there's, you know, you could break it down to, into three types, credit cards and mortgage and kind of other, I think would be a good way to look at that. But these are just different types of credit. So it says identify three, but I think we may have uh, surpassed that. So you should, you should know what are types of credit. And you should also know the difference between a secured loan and a non-secured loan. So secured loans simply are secured by collateral. And the collateral can be repossessed if you don't pay the loan. Uh, that's what a secured loan is. It has some kind of collateral backing it, like the house, the car. Um, you can also do that in investment accounts. Have a loan basically against your own investments. So that's a, a secured loan. An unsecured loan has no collateral. And that's this card. An unsecured loan has no such collateral. It's only backed by the borrower your promise to pay. So unsecured loans are basically personal loans um, and non-secured credit cards. Secured loans are considered higher quality loans, obviously, because the creditor has something they can attach, they can go get if you don't pay uh, your, your loan, your bill. Three major credit reporting agencies, hopefully you know what these are because you've already gotten your, uh, your credit report. There's Experian, Equifax, TransUnion. These are the three major credit reporting agencies and they are independent. Uh, they're for profit. And they each collect information in a little bit different ways. Uh, describe what these agencies do. So credit agencies, they are for profit and they're not government agencies and they compile and maintain credit information uh, from credit from credit card, well from credit card companies, banks, mortgage companies and other creditors uh, for the purpose of creating a personal in-depth credit report on you. <laughs> so that's what they do. They basically collect data 
and they assemble the data and they put it into a report and they create a score. And that's what we're going to talk about. Name two types of inquiries. This is important to know. A hard inquiry and a soft inquiry. Which one shows up on your credit report? A hard inquiry means that you're basically asking someone to consider you for more credit. That's a hard inquiry. Their soft inquiries could be anything from somebody just checking to see if you're a good credit risk. Um, that would be soft. If you do your own, uh, I think if you pull your own credit report, I don't even think that's an inquiry. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. But a hard inquiry versus a soft inquiry, just know that if you're applying for credit, anything that's going to expand your uh, amount of credit would be a hard inquiry. Oh, did we name two types? Yeah, we've got hard and, and soft. So let's summarize the most important information in a credit report. They generally include personal information, credit account information, information about the accounts you have open credit on, also inquiries, hard and soft. Um, uh, hard inquiries are what affect your credit score, though. Soft inquiries don't. They do show up on your report. Delinquency information, a big ticket item for your credit report and your credit score. Any information from collection agencies shows up on your report. Um, this is the information that goes into a credit report and subsequently into a credit score. Public information from the state or other courts will also go into that report. Let's summarize the Fair Credit Reporting Act of 1971. Basically, it gives free access to credit reports and credit scores um, from three national credit reporting agencies, and we already talked about what they are. I'm having some extra noise in my office. Hope it's not messing up the video. Um, how can a consumer get free access to his or her credit reports? And you know the answer. Oh, I didn't include it. It's annualcreditreport.com. That didn't work. Oh, there it is. Annualcreditreport.com. Two reasons why consumers need to review credit reports. We talked about this in class already. There's frequent uh, mistakes, and then and you want to check for that. And it's one of the ways that you can reduce the risk of identity theft. So now let's discuss how to fix errors on your credit report. So two things to know. If you have negative information in your report, if that information is incorrect, that can be repaired pretty easily. You just submit a request to the credit agency that's reporting the negative, incorrect information. Um, but if it's negative information that's legitimate, it can't be removed so easily. This requires a lot of work, some planning, due diligence, and persistence. Um, Negative information that is incorrect, though, can be addressed immediately. Just send in uh, contact, you know, send in uh, up to 100 words to the credit reporting agency, and they have a link for that on their site. Describe credit scores in general. So a credit score is a number that summarizes your credit risk based on a lot of data and an evaluation of your credit report and it's always based on a particular point in time. Credit scores are calculated using a formula with at least four variables um, with various weightings and we'll talk about those weightings in a minute. FICO scores, FICO by the way stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. Uh, these scores involve various credit scoring companies and many different credit scores. And two different credit scores you should be aware of is one is FICO and one is Vantage score. Four things that are not indicated in a credit score. Actually, that should be included. Um, so they did a survey and they found that a lot of folks believed that pay raises would be reflected in a credit report and they're not. Credit inquiries, checking a credit report, there you go. That does not cause, uh, that does not affect your credit score. Paying down debt, paying off debts from late payments does not automatically increase a credit score. Think about that. Paying down debt, just paying down your credit cards, 
yeah, that'll save you interest, but it won't re improve your credit score necessarily. I know. That's why Dave Ramsey says this is a, an I love credit score. The credit card industry, the credit industry, their hope is that you'll be a lifelong customer and that you will uh, purchase as much credit, purchase as much on credit as you possibly can, and even maybe that you can't possibly afford. And as we did in class, uh, we did the exercise showing the cost of a credit card if you don't pay it off each month. So just know that paying down debt is good for you, but it's not really good for your credit score. Trending information, recent changes, is not indicated on your credit report. Remember, it's a snapshot in time. So credit report doesn't really show trending improvements in your overall credit. Moving right along, let's describe the FICO score. So it's calculated using a formula, and there are many types of information that go into it. And uh, that's about it. Define the FICO score ranges. I think you should know that these are the ranges. So it goes from 300 to 850, and this, this uh, gives you the ranges. So what a good, fair, poor, bad score is according to FICO. Describe how FICO score is broken down. So this tells you the weighting. So payment history, <clears throat> excuse me, payment history is 35% of your score. Um, that is, you know, how, what, what does it look like? What's your history with payments? Amount owed, how much debt you have, that's 30%. Length of the credit history, 15%. So how long you have the credit account is a part of the calculation up to 15 or 15%. And new credit, if you apply for new credit, that affects your credit score, 10% weighting. Types of credit used, you would, I would think this would be a higher number, but if you have uh, more mortgage and less credit card debt, that will affect your score, but it's just not a huge number, 10% there. Four factors that do not influence FICO scores, gender, race, nationality, and marital status. They don't take those into account. Um, the factors that influence Vantage scores. So, first of all, the purpose of the FICO scoring system. It, mm, let's see. Describe the factors. that. In, I think that's the wrong card. I think I messed up on that one. I'm going to skip that one. One benefit of the FICO scoring system is quick, it's easy, uh, it's easy access to credit, which is a major source of economic strength. Remember, 60 to 70 percent of the U.S. GDP growth is related to consumer spending. So it's to the economy's benefit for everybody to have quick, easy access to credit so they can buy more stuff and keep that engine cooking. Uh, so that helps with stability. Uh, and for businesses too, obviously. If you're a business, you want to sell your products and you want those products and services to be available to consumers even if they can't afford to pay them. I mean, you know, if they need to use credit to purchase those products and services, if you're a business owner, that's okay. That's good for you. So describe the FICO alternative score. This is something that Equifax and FICO did together um, and they included cable, cell phone, electric, and gas to produce a credit score. And basically, this was uh, just to help people become credit worthy. And that's what that was about. So 10 factors that positively impact FICO scores. This is a good screen to know. I said 10, and there are 10, but I didn't put a 10 by foreclosures. So most important is timely payments, paying your payments on time. Um, having more history, more uh, duration on the accounts, having no late charges, that's important, that affects, and having no payments that are 30, 60, or 90 days late. Credit utilization, so uh, we'll talk about that again in a couple of cards, but credit utilization just means that you're using your credit. If you have a bunch of credit cards and you never use them, then your credit utilization is going to impact your score. You want to use them. Um, 
No new hard inquiries, that's a good thing, and it impacts your score. No recently closed accounts, FYI. When you close a credit card account or a credit account, it dings, it reduces your credit score. I know, go figure. Again, that's why Dave Ramsey calls this an I love credit score, because the score is designed to evaluate what kind of consumer you are of credit. So, as you can imagine, the credit card industry doesn't want you to close your accounts. They want you to keep them open and use them and pay the interest. Um, so, there you have it. If you have no charge-offs, that's a good thing. No liens, judgments, and foreclosures. So, there the, there's a good list. Six factors that negatively impact your FICO scores. Changes in utilization rate a significant change in utilization rate. So you're using your credit capacity more or less. Significant changes will reduce your credit score. If you're not paying your child support, that'll whack your credit score. Uh, if your wages are being garnished, that is reported to the agencies. Obviously new hard inquiries. We already talked about closing of accounts and opening new accounts as well. So some of this isn't real intuitive, but if you just think about the fact that you're opening new credit accounts, expanding your exposure, um, that's going to reduce your credit score, especially if you go beyond your capacity. Whatever the algorithm figures out is your credit capacity. Uh, let's see. Describe Vantage score. This is something that's been around for a while. Uh, the, the Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion joined together to create this Vantage score in 06. Um, and it tries to improve the FICO score by putting more weight on the last 24 months um, of credit history. It weighs payment history more than the FICO score does. And it's, again, designed to help someone keep good credit who is recently performing well with regard to their payment history. So that's the Vantage score and that's how that works. Three easy ways to establish credit. don't know that we talked about these, but number one is to get a secured credit card. A secured credit card basically means you go down to a bank, you put money in the account, and they give you a credit card to let you use your own money. Um, but that gives you a credit history. By paying back your own money into that account with a secured credit card, secured by the money you deposited in the bank, that helps you build credit. So that's important to know. You can get a loan with a cosigner. Like you may not be able to qualify for a loan, um, but if you get me to cosign, you'll qualify and that will help you build credit. So don't ask me though. Ask your parent or your uncle or someone who loves you. Uh, you can get a single purpose card, so that's like a gas card. That's easy to get, typically. Um, and another idea is to get an, a car loan and just save up a bunch of money and put down as much as you can and get a small loan on the car. You're much more likely to be able to get the loan if you have a big down payment because it's a secured loan. So if you pay you know, 60% down or 50% down, and the car's worth, let's say, 10 grand, and you put five grand down, any bank will lend you money for that because if you don't pay, they go grab the car. They own it. So there you have it. Six simple ways for managing credit. Let's see. Credit utilization, we talked about that. Don't, you can keep your balances low, but just not zero. And that doesn't mean you can't pay them off every month, but you need to be putting something on the credit card in order for that to juice your credit score. Credit history, don't close accounts. Again, this is not my advice or recommendation. This is how your, your credit score works. Payment history, pay everything on time. Limit hard inquiries, don't go applying for new credit all around town. Um, just do what you need. Good credit mix, have a good mix of credit types. Again, that's only 10%, but it does matter. Uh, and monitor your credit by getting free credit reports every year. You can get three. There are three agencies, so you can get one like every four months, which is a good idea. Describe credit utilization. So this is 
basically what I was saying before. You can pay it off every month and not pay any interest, but you don't want to keep it zero all the time. That's going to give you a bad score for utilization. Four other users of credit information. So you got potential employers. Yes, they check your credit. Um, life insurance providers, and I put auto insurance too because insurance companies will check your credit. Uh, potential landlords, did you know your landlord could check your credit to see if you're a worthy credit risk before they sign that lease with you? And cell phone companies, so these are additional users who are tapping into your credit report to see if you're a good credit risk. And again, by the way, just the fact that they're checking your credit, that's a soft, it's not a hard, what was the word? I forgot the word. Um, it's not a, God, I'm having a, a brain. You know I'm going on vacation next week. That's why I'm doing this video. So let me get through this and I'm going to hit the road. Describe charge cards. We haven't talked about charge cards, but so American Express is the most popular of all time charge card and the difference between a charge card and a credit card is you can charge things on the card but you have to pay them off a charge card at the end of the month you don't get to keep a balance I'm not sure what happens if you don't pay the balance probably you pay a big fee and you probably get the card canceled pretty quick but that's a charge card um, and they do have annual fees eight signs of identity theft this is a good one take a screen capture here this is a good uh, you know good list for you to know mysterious bank withdrawals failure to receive bills or mail merchants refuse your checks debt collectors are calling about something you've never never heard of unknown accounts are appearing on your credit report that's a big reason to get your credit reports if you're getting unknown medical bills, IRS notices with multiple tax returns or unknown income being reported, um, and obviously a notice of breach from any business where you have a legitimate account. So that was a good list just to know for yourself, for your friends, and for your family. So let's go. We've got five more cards. Five things a person who is a victim of identity theft should do. Again, this is a good a good screen for you to capture. You want to file a report with law enforcement, file a complaint with the FTC, and place a fraud alert on your credit records. Contact your financial institutions and close any accounts opened without permission or if they've been tampered with. Also check the Social Security Administration earnings statement annually. I know you probably don't do that now, <laughs> but eventually that's a good idea once you start earning income. Uh, let's see, where to find Social Security benefit statement? I know you need to know this, ssa.gov. Four ways you can protect yourself from becoming a victim of identity theft. This is a nice little uh, uh, acronym from the federal government, SCAM. It's the acronym SCAM. So just be really skeptical uh, about giving out your information check your financial information, which we already talked about. Um, ask for your credit reports and review them regularly. And then maintain, monitor your financial records. Scam. How to file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission. So I'm going to let you take a screenshot here if you'd like. Uh, it's good information to have. I'm sure you're not staying awake at night thinking about it. The problem is when it happens, you really want that information. And you'll probably shoot me a text message and ask me for it. So I'll save the screen. Next and last is how to place a fraud alert on credit cards. So here's another, you know, another, these are the numbers for each of the reporting firms. I'm going to let you grab that screen so you can put that in your favorite photos. And now I'm going to just say, hey, I'm going to miss you next week because I won't be in class. Um, if, I, if, if there's anything I can do for you, you'll have to wait till I get back. Um, but hopefully this week you've learned as much as you want to know and need to know about credit scores and credit reports. Um, so 
thanks for watching my video and I will be back a week from probably a week from the time you watch this video. I don't know when you're going to watch this video, but have a great week and I'll see you soon. Thanks.